For the second straight year, Becker is host to number one versus number two in Class 3A. We welcome you to a Saturday matinee of high school girls basketball and what could be a state championship preview for Class 3A. The Becker Bulldogs at 18 and three host the Benilde St. Margaret's Red Knights at 16 and five. Greetings everyone, I'm Mike Peden. Here I am all by myself talking to myself. That's chaos theory. But no chaos with these two teams. Becker continuing their sustained run of excellence. They have qualified for the Class 3A state tournament for four straight years, and it looks like they will do so for a fifth consecutive year, considering how much they have dominated the Mississippi A Conference, including the section teams that reside within them. On top of that, the Bulldogs have a pair of wins against 4A teams. They beat Eden Prairie in December, and more recently, knocked off Roseville and almost pulled one off against Minnetonka. This team has been able to hang with some of the best around the state. They'll get a couple of tests in the next 48 hours or so with Benel St. Margaret's and then Minnehaha Academy in two days time. For Becker, they have just about everyone back. Alexis Rose unable to play as she recovers from ACL surgery. But you've got Ayla Brown, who recently passed 1,000 career points. Danny News, the all-time record holder in three-point field goals. And a sharpshooter in Marin Westin. Marin going to Green Bay and his lights up in the free throw line, shooting 92%. And that has been the formula over the last several years with Becker. Lots of sharpshooters who can light it up from three-point range. And they can also pad on the points at the free throw line. If those perimeter shots fall, Becker will be in good position to take the victory and in doing so, become the favorite to grab the number one seed in Class 3A. But Benel St. Margaret's isn't going to let them do that easily. The Red Knights, all of their losses have come against 4A teams. They were swept by Chaska in Metro West Conference play and they lost to three late conference teams, but they have made significant progress from last year's team that reached the state tournament. And a lot of it has to do with the fluidity, the camaraderie, the chemistry of their one-two tandem, Olivia Olson and Kendall McGee. Olivia and Kendall pick up a lot of assists for each other, and they often trade the leading scorer duties with each game. They both average about 20 points per game. Olivia maybe has the bigger stat line with several double-doubles and a triple-double in their victory against Como Park. But make no mistake, there is no selfishness with this Red Knights team. Olivia Olsen can beat you from just about anywhere. Kendall McGee, we've seen her before. She is an excellent attacker. And their X Factor, who came back after missing a few games, Sierra Lumpkin. Sierra averages just under 10 a game, but she gives the Red Knights that third option to take pressure off of Olsen and McGee. With her in the lineup, this Red Knights team making a serious run and a win over Becker would peg them as the favorite to win the Class 3A title. Find out who wins the Saturday matinee edition of High School Girls Basketball when we return. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James, she's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, Visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to Becker, one of our favorite places to visit. Largely due to the high powered non conference teams Becker puts on the schedule. And this game, no exception. 
Lots of Division I talent, some Division II talent as well. Danny Neust and Ayla Brown both headed to Division II schools. Bar and Westing going to Green Bay. And based on the information we have, Olivia Olson of Benilde St. Margaret's 10 double-doubles and that triple-double against Cobalt Park. 39 points, 10 rebounds, 12 steals. But the Red Knights putting together an impressive resume where they've hung with the late conference teams even though they weren't able to get wins against them and have fared quite well in Metro West competition. For Becker, they're running through the Mississippi Eight as they customarily do. As the Bulldogs are being introduced. Their closest competition in the section is Monticello, but in the conference series, Becker won those games handily. Benilde St. Margaret's, they'll have a tougher path in their section. Delano, a rising team in section 6-3A, and Holy Angels always in the mix. But plenty of quality wins on the resume. Becker's three losses came against Minnetonka, Providence Academy in the second game of that series, and St. Michael Aberville at the Community Clash, but they won't have to worry about facing any of those teams since they're not in 3A. Here are the starters. For Benilde St. Margaret's, it's Olivia Olson, the Michigan Verbal, Sierra Lumpkin, Kendall McGee, Kate Kapsner, and Josie Naji, Maya's little sister. Becker will start Danny Neust, Marn Westeen, the Green Bay commit. Ayla Brown, she's going to Sioux Falls. Evelyn Kreft and Elizabeth McAdams, Danny Neust headed to Michigan Tech. Benilde St. Margaret's 16 and five, Becker 18 and three, but make no mistake, the winner of this game will likely secure the one seed, and that is presuming both teams get out of their section. Becker expected to get through section 5-3A. Benilde St. Margaret's may have a tough task with Holy Angels, but a lot at stake here between two teams who took part in last year's 3A state tournament, both with reasonable chances of winning it as the defending champion Totino Grace Eagles in a rebuilding year. Becker lost to them in the championship last year. Benilde St. Margaret's wins the tip but they can't hang on to the ball for long. And it goes right over to Robin. No shot clock today, but Becker is ready for that transition next year. Here's news to Westine. We were here for the Becker Holy Angels game last year and Westine dropped eight three pointers that day. Red Knights take over. This is Lumpkin, the bounce pass to Naji. Blocked from behind. So a defensive hustle play on the part of Becker. And we remain scoreless for the moment. Noose. Now Brown has it, noosed again. Lumpkin tried the time to pass. Brown, the kick out, three from the corner. McAdams can't connect. And here comes McGee going coast to coast for the finish. That is Kendall's bread and butter if you've watched her either at Benilde St. Margaret's or with their Minnesota Stars team in AAU. She is one of the most prolific slashers in the game. Becker trying to run a play inside, pass deflected. 16.26 left. In the first half, Benilde St. Margaret's with an early 2-0 lead. News almost lost the footing. Hangs on to it though. Now McAdams stops at the high post. Noost again. 
Tried to lean through Lumpkin, couldn't quite do it. Olsen, driving kick, McGee. Baseline jumper short. News to Westeen. Long three. Just off the mark. McGee going outlet finds Kate Kapsner for the bucket. Red Knights with an early 4 0 lead. McGee averages 2.3 assists. Olsen leads the team in that mark at 3.8. But this unit starting to gel. Driving kick, Westine from the corner. Three is a long. Kendall McGee picks it up again. McGee with the hesitation move, lost her defender and drops a three. McGee off to an explosive start. Two field goals and an assist. Seven nothing, Noost, hesitation move. Kicks it back out, Westine will try again. This time the corner three is pure. Becker, if they can hit their threes, they will be in contention. That's how they beat Providence Academy in the first meeting. Last touch by Fidel St. Mar or I should say Becker. They both start with B. Last year, Becker hosted Holy Angels. It was Becker number one, Holy Angels number two. This year, Benilde St. Margaret's number one, Becker number two. Kate Kapsner on the drive. Whoever wins this game will, in all likelihood, take that number one spot and hang on to it. Becker sinks another three. This time, it's Hannah Durkis. Those three-point bombs, one reason why Becker consistently one of the highest scoring teams in Class 3A. They average 70 points per game, but Ilde St. Margaret's averaging 76.3. The players are mostly the same from last year on the BSM side. Noose throws it away, was looking for Brown, but not in the right spot. 9-6 the score, Red Knights over Bulldogs. Benilde St. Margaret's largely the same contingent as last year, but a difference in coach, Tim Ellison coming over from Hutchinson. Here's Olsen, lost the handle. Brown comes up with a steal, and these two have a ruggedness about them. If they make a mistake, they don't sweat it. Here's Brown, that would have tied it. These two shrug off mistakes without much difficulty. They just focus on the next play. Here comes McGee. The skip and the triple for Sidney Fridley. So McGee continuing to make an impact early. Last touched by BSM. 12.55 left in the first half. Fidel St. Margaret's with a 12-6 lead. And even though Benilde St. Margaret's maybe doesn't have the better record between the two, here's McAdans out to Brown. Three ball, corner pocket. So Becker starting to land those threes, and that could spell good things for last year's silver medalist. That will be a foul on Becker and Ayla Brown, but. Benilde St. Margaret's making progress. Again, the teams they lost to outside of Chaska, that was really the only bad loss they suffered. Everyone else, they hung with. McGee looking for Olsen, gets her own miss, can't flip it in, so to the line she goes. They had a chance to beat Hopkins, they had a chance to beat Minnetonka. 
They had a chance to knock off Eden Prairie. They didn't get wins in those games. But they didn't get blown out either. Olivia Olsen averaging 21.4 points per game, 9.6 rebounds. Drops both free throws. It's 14-9 as Olsen gets on the board. Westine. Pass tipped and intercepted by McGee. Doesn't have the numbers. Tried to lob it for Olsen. Left the pass just a bit short. I think if she went with one of those back shoulder throws, it's a term you hear more in football. Olsen at least catches it and would have a chance to score. But she left it short. I think that time McGee needed a little more distance. But it's a break for Becker. Backdoor play leads to a layup for Evelyn Kreft. And it's a one possession game. Olsen, side fade. Three is long. Kreft with a rebound. Neust. Finds a lane and gets it to drop. So Danny's on the board. And I think Becker has settled in after some early misfires. McGee, showcasing her speed and agility, came up short on the runner, gets her own miss, and draws a late foul. Kendall McGee. The newcomer last year has really blossomed this year. There were some discussions on how she would manage, how she would mesh joining a team that had a high caliber player in Olivia Olson. But if you look at her performance this season, I'd say it's working out just fine. McGee makes both free throws. And we all know about Olivia Olson, but I don't sense any egos about them. Noost for three. Short, rebound, number three, Mackenzie Wells. That's Zahara Bishop, who scores on the turnaround. Bishop missed the last few games, but she is another key piece of this Bedell St. Margaret's lineup. And the lead is back to five. Kickball. <laughs> Brown to Noost. Big day of basketball. Holy Angels in Stillwater playing today. And the Gophers are hosting Wisconsin. Brown, corner three, bullseye. <laughs> Becker with a quick swing around the fence. And Brown finishes it off with the corner three, her second three-pointer. Lumpkin, the skip, Fridley. Tried to lob it inside to Wells, pass broken up and taken away by Neust. One-on-one -on -one against Bishop, unable to get the finish. McGee, cross court, Bishop for three, short. Westine with the rebound, 18-16. 10 minutes to go in the first half. Westine with a step through for two. We're tied at 18. Talking to both coaches ahead of time, not a whole lot. There really aren't any secrets with these two. They just said, here's McGee with a long three, and it comes up long. But they both said something along the lines of, this will be helpful for the both of us as Gurkis will go to the line. She was fouled by Bishop. So no real tactical analysis needed. This is just one of those tune-up games. So Durkis to shoot a pair. 
Durkis, one of the players who has received more playing time after Alexis Rose tore her ACL and was out for the year. Durkis averaging 5.1 a game. Not a lot of free throw attempts. Offensive rebound for Becker. Neust through the hole and in. A three point play in reverse. And Becker leads 21 18. Najee, the lob to Olsen, and she flips it in for her first field goal. Neust. Out to Brown. Uses the Euro step. Came up just short on the layup. Heck of a try, though. McGee lines up Kapsner for a three point try, and that will be a dead ball rebound to the Bulldogs. 8.33 left in the first half. 21 18 our score. And a reminder that we'll be back here. If you're watching this on the TSB Television YouTube channel, we're back here Monday when Becker hosts Mini Ha Ha Academy. Becker taking on the top dogs in the IMAC. And some of the top dogs in the lake, too. Lead pass a little long for Olsen. She crashes into the curtain, and Josie Najee makes lemonade out of lemons. It's a good thing we have that curtain there, or Olsen might have run all the way to Alexandria. Becker answers with a three from the key. Ayla Brown with her third triple. Becker with five three-pointers already. Najee to Olsen again, off balance this time, and Olivia Olsen could not get it to drop. Brown feeds it to McAdams. In the heavy traffic, though, McAdams couldn't do much there. McGee flips it to Lumpkin. Lumpkin missed the bunny. Those are plays you want to have. Brown for three. Westine skies up for the O-board. Neust finds an open. McAdams for three. And that's short. Olivia Olsen using her lane to get the rebound. She's got numbers. And a traveling call. Tried to draw the foul, and it didn't work out. 24-22, we've got a tight one here. Westine turns on the accelerator. Kicks out, another three, bullseye, Ayla Brown, good grief. Six forty-two left in the first half. Ayla Brown with 12 points for three-pointers. By the way, on the floor for the Bulldogs is Lauren Kroll, number 14, a newcomer to the roster getting some playing time as well. But how about Ayla Brown, who has her share of big games this season. A lightning quick first step. Led the team last year in three-point field goal percentage, shooting 45% behind the arc. Coffee and Odyssey are her two loves, and she also participates in tennis, youth group, and the FCA for Becker. Ayla Brown with some big games. You may recall in the second meeting with Providence Academy, she dropped, I believe, 29 points. And she has eight games with 20 points or more coming into today. And her three-point stroke, not quite as accurate as last year. She's shooting 34%. But they're going in right now, and that's what matters. And when you look across the board, Danny New shooting 40%. Westine shooting 33, and McAdams 
Doesn't have a lot of threes, but she's shooting about 38%. That's less than 50, so a little less than a coin flip, but these Becker players are going to take more than two three-pointers a game. 27-22, Becker with momentum here. They call timeout. McGee, short on the three. Jump ball, Becker with the arrow. Brown throws it away. Another miscommunication. Solid crowned on hand from the Becker side. They love their basketball up here. Olsen, 17 footer. Not there. Olivia struggling a bit. Westine steps into the three and knocks it down. I said this last year, I'll say it again. Great Scott. Speaking of great Scott, Kendall McGee put on the brakes. I thought she was gonna slide into a traveling call. Stayed on her pivot. Scored the layup there. Brown through the hole, but too strong. McGee. Finds Olsen, Olivia positions herself and misses again. Westine. Out to Noost. Westine for three. Hit the mark, just bounced out. Najee. Cross court skip. Lumpkin. Her three is long. Westine with another rebound. She missed a few games this year for a knee procedure, but she is back at 100%. And a good thing for Becker. Their unquestioned leader on the floor. Cuts inside, draws the foul to shoot two. Marty is her nickname. Averaging 14 points per game, shooting 92%. From the free throw line, 92. You don't see a lot of players shoot that well. Dan Baird says the way she moves about the floor, her decision making, not unlike what an NBA player would exhibit. She's almost automatic at the free throw line. Of course, you're not gonna get 100. Few people do, but 92%. That provides a lot of value, especially in tight games. 32-24. Bishop. Into traffic. Dead ball re rebound to Benilde St. Margaret's. BSM. Getting a few of those backdoor plays, those passes, so they're reading those double teams, but they're having trouble finishing as they trail by 8, 32, 24. 421 left in the first half, though, a lot of time. And Bedell St. Margaret's, they've seen their share of challenges this season. I don't think they're going to be phased in the slightest. Most of this team back from a year ago. McGee. Lost the handle, Danny News picks it up. Westine, another three. Yes! <laughs> 13 points for Marty. And now the Becker student section getting into it. Not a lot of them here for a Saturday noon game, but those who are in their best tropical outfit, McGee. In trouble. Olsen. Swarmed. Was looking for Wells, but the pass was tipped. Becker on the run. Durkis with the finish. Timeout. Benel St. Margaret's. 
Becker on a run. They lead 37-24. Oh, I don't know if I would call them overrated. Benilde St. Margaret's, that is. They have playmakers as well, but Becker flying right now. Hannah Durkis up to six points. Again, got more time when Alexis Rose went out due to injury. And Durkis averaging 5.1, but she's coming along. Lauren Kroll came in midway through the season. Doesn't score a lot, but anything that gives Becker more bodies, more players, is helpful. Alexis Rose, one of those scoring sharpshooters we talked about. A huge loss there when she went down with the ACL injury against Minnetonka back in December, the Granite City Classic. But over the last several years, this has been the model presented by Becker. They don't just have one explosive player. Any of them, particularly the starters, can chip in. Whether it was Courtney Neust and Julia Bainson from a few years ago. This year's team, you've got Danny Neust, Marn Westeen, Ayla Brown, and Alexis Rose will be back for her senior season in the blue and Columbia blue. Navy and Columbia blue, I should say. Following the timeout, Lumpkin missing the elbow J. Chance for Becker to extend this lead. Those threes are falling. And that opens up plenty of options when that occurs. They couldn't get one to drop there. Olivia Olson charging her way, and she will not be denied. You can contain her for a while, but sooner or later, Olivia Olson finds a way to exert her influence. And we'll stay with Becker, 2.33 left in the first half. Westine to Durkis, three off the screen, bullseye! Durkis with nine off the bench. Olsen with a Caitlin Clark range three. And anything that can keep an old St. Margaret's within reach, they'll take. But usually don't see Olsen go that far. We have an offensive foul on Becker. Of course, Olivia, a decorated athlete, a gold medalist in the FIBA U16 Women's World Cup back in 2021, verbal to Michigan earlier this year, considered the top prospect in the junior class, she and Liv McGill, one and two. Just don't ask me who's one and who's two. Dirk is hit with a foul. Non-shooting foul, so just a side out here for Benilde St. Margaret's. As the Red Knights try to get some of that mojo back. Danny Neust has other ideas. Takes off running, too strong on the layup. Olsen collects the rebound. The skip to Fridley, three is off line, and I think that's where the difference is right now. Becker hitting those threes. They'll have to use a timeout here with Danny News trapped near the baseline. 121 left in the first half. And a fitting song because Becker has dropped a lot of bombs in this game, but Three points shooting the difference in this one. Benilde St. Margaret's has a few. They have three, but Becker, they're feeling it. Marm Westine with three triples. Ayla Brown with four triples. Hannah Durkis has a couple. And Becker outpacing Benilde St. Margaret's from three-point range. That's how they beat Providence Academy in the first meeting, the first game of that series. In the second game, 
They struggled a bit. Providence Academy got the win. A rare instance of a non-conference series like that. They'd already had a regular season meeting planned and decided, you know what, we'll play each other again. But Becker, they're not afraid of a challenge. No matter who it is, no matter what class, they want to play against the best. And they have done just that over the last several years. And we've been blessed to showcase some of those moments. Well, there was 101 points against Como Park, the highest scoring game in team history. For Ayla Brown, muscling her way inside. In case you're wondering, she can make two pointers as well. Less than a minute. Becker leads by 13. Bishop, fade away, swish. Bishop with four off the bench. Here's Westine to Brown, open for three. Bullseye! Five three-pointers for Ayla Brown. Benel St. Margaret's goes high low, but Kapsner had to turn around, and I think that cost her. It gave Becker just enough time to move into position. And Becker can end this half with an exclamation point. Maybe two. Seven seconds. Neust attacks the lane and will shoot two. Noose, the Michigan Tech commit, Division II school. Adeline Kent, another one, she's at Tampa now. Denny's favorite food is raspberries, and she also plays tennis and involved in the FCA and youth group. Like we said, Becker, they love their basketball up here. A strong community bond with the Becker Breakfast Club, as they call it and what they've done to build themselves into a perennial contender. Noose makes both free throws, so maybe not quite the exclamation point, but they'll take it. McGee almost went in. It's halftime. And Becker playing like their nickname. 47-31 as they are tearing it up from three-point range. Benel St. Margaret's has the work cut out for them, but they do have the pieces and the talent to pull it off. It could come down to three-pointers. If Becker continues that three-point sharpshooting display of theirs, they could pick up a huge win. We'll take a break and rejoin you for the second half. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. Becker leads Benel St. Margaret's 47-31. Twin City Sports Broadcasting, and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh. Oh, I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. I'm going to be coming back for the second half as Becker and Benilde St. Margaret's continue their tilt in the battle of number one versus number two in class 3A. First half numbers as Becker leads 47-31. Ayla Brown with 17 points. Marm Westine with 13. Hannah Durkis has nine. Benel St. Margaret's, Olsen and McGee both have nine each. The difference in this game, three pointers. Ayla Brown has five. Marm Westine has three. Hannah Durkis has three. You add those up, that's 11 three pointers. Benel St. Margaret's has just three and those extra points can go a long way. That's how Becker beat Providence Academy in the first meeting of that series. And that's how they beat a lot of high-powered teams. But we have 18 more minutes to play. Nobody's won this yet. If Benilde St. Margaret's 
can get back. Remember, they had that strong start in the first half. If they can lean on that, they can work their way in this game. But talking to some of the parents at halftime, they echo the same vibes as the coaches. Everyone knows this could be one out of a possible two meetings. Here's McGee for three. Yes. So McGee with her second three-pointer of the game, and that is a welcome sign for Benilde St. Margaret's as they have some work to do. Brown through the hole. Two more. And Brown closing in on her ninth 20-point game this season. Olsen, the turnaround. Yes. McAdans looked for a lane, couldn't find one. Skips it to Brown, or I should say Noost, and then hands it off to Brown. My apologies, but Ayla has been knocking down so many shots. It feels like there's clones over all over the place, and on cue, she attacks again. Nine 20 point games for Ayla Brown. McGee, another three. This time it's long, and the carom bounces over to Westine. Noose, deep three, short, and McGee collects the rebound. Kendall looking to go coast to coast, and she pulls it off. Can't give her a lane because McGee, we've seen it many, many times. If she sees an opening, She's gonna drive through it. But no one taking too much stock in this game. It is a good test for both teams, but knowing they could see each other again, Ayla Brown making herself at home though. And you have to remember, both teams reached the state tournament last year. Brown with 23 points. She's closing in on that season high. She dropped 29 in the second meeting with Providence Academy. No three-point play, but Brown just about flawless here. Kendall McGee sinks the turnaround and she is warming up. The problem is, Benilde St. Margaret's is trading baskets with Becker. Driving kick, three ball. Rebound tipped, Lumpkin picks it up. Najee looking for the high-low, but Becker, well aware of Olsen's influence, swarming her down low. They got the steal out of it. Westine. Count it. I already said great Scott once. I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> she understands the reference, though. More importantly for Westine, the anchor of this team, if you were to pin it on one person, but that's not how they do things at Becker. And that is one reason they have been a contender for so long. They've reached the championship round in four straight years as Brown gets the three-point play. I should say Westine. A couple of silver medals, a gold medal, and we'll never know what would have happened in 2020. That's a pretty good run. And you look at what has changed around them in that time. De La Salle, it looked like they were gonna be the standard bearer, but politics led to a retooling of that group. Becker calls timeout as Brown was in a jam. Bulldogs will have two remaining, but they're looking pretty good right now, leading 56-40 with 14.34 to go. And that gives me a chance to continue that discussion. De La Salle, Retooling, they could get back into state this year, but 
they haven't recaptured the dominance with Tanisha Scott, at least not yet. Last year's champion, Titino Grace, rebuilding after the two players who got them the title, Hannah Herzig and Leah Dengarud, went on to college ball. I think there was some discussion over the length of the timeout. Becker, a model of consistency. And Benilde St. Margaret's, they've been building their way up. It was Olivia Olsen for a time. Last year, they got Kendall McGee. That was enough to get them to state after they beat Holy Angels, that perennial roadblock this year. Who knows? Becker, again, should have a good chance to get out of their section. It is a little amusing where Dan Baird, the head coach, said, we expect to improve on our scoring average of 75 points per game. Becker slightly lower at 70, but the results remain the same. Neust, guarded by Lumpkin. Brown. Ball deflected by Benilde St. Margaret's. It will stay here. 56-40 the score. Touch three off the inbound, comes up short. Bishop looking to go outlet, finds McGee. Fridley for three, and that bounces out. Westine, the runner, just a little strong. Olsen puts Brown on the spin cycle, extra rinse. We've seen her pull off some acrobatic moves with Minnesota Fury and Benilde St. Margaret. She is a true joy to watch. Lumpkin brings the pressure, but Benilde St. Margaret's can't hang on to it. Dirkus back on the floor for Becker. And here's Brown. Lobs it back to Westine. Lost the handle, Kendall McGee picks her pocket. Sees a lane, drives through the hole, and adds two more. Kendall. Continuing to dazzle. Brown says right back at you. And I wonder when you hit as many threes as she did in the first half, if that has opened up her driving game. McGee is fouled. Just the first on Becker in this half. Fair share of media attending this one. Eric Bugard here. And I'm glad we're here as well. Olsen missing another touch shot down low. It's been a little feast or famine. Stop, pop, switch. <laughs> Westine with 19. And Eld St. Margaret's takes a timeout. That's a pretty notable swing as Becker takes a 17-point lead. Westine with 19, had 30 points in a game earlier this season, missed six, but you wouldn't know it right now. Her season high, 30. And the Bulldogs looking quite spry. Again, we're back here Monday when Becker hosts Mini Ha Ha Academy. As we enter the stretch run, the final two weeks, that means games are wrapping up and we'll be bidding farewell to 
another season of broadcast coverage. It has been a busy one on my end, covering games for multiple stations. Warren Westine with some pretty gouty numbers, even though she had to miss a few recovering from a knee procedure. That has not diminished her impact. That 30-point game she had came against Monticello, by the way. She had just four against Chisago Lakes, but didn't need to score a lot of points then. Back to action. Red Knights ball, deep three for Olsen. And Livia still not having the best of games. Not her worst, but I don't think this is going the way she would prefer. And free throws coming for Hannah Durkis who split the last time up. Again, Durkis, not a lot of trips to the free throw line. Doesn't quite have the same form as the starters. At least not yet. But sometimes it takes a little while to get those legs under you, as the saying goes. Get that technique, that form down. And it's gonna be another split for Durkis. So she goes up to 10. Becker extending their lead. McGee, another three. It's there. Olsen with the dime. McGee with 21. Brown hassled a little too much by Bishop. And that will be a foul. But the more I watch McGee, the more I believe that Kendall will put her name on the list of top prospects in her class. The sophomore having a scintillating, sensational season. High low, Brown couldn't get open, finds Westine, passes up the three, goes inside for the layup. I think Westine is taking a page out of Brown's playbook. Bishop left alone, three rattles out, and that's the difference. One of them right now as Brown takes the rebound, can't make the coast-to-coast -coast play. McAdans follows to get the offensive rebound. Neust almost had it. But Benel St. Margaret struggling to get anything beyond McGee and Olsen. Becker getting production all around. Olsen faked the shot. Becker read the play. And I think Bishop got a piece of Brown shot. Here comes Kendall McGee with a full head of speed. Had the clutch. Couple of O-boards and a three-point play chance for the Red Knights. Kate Kapsner with the layup and that's what we're talking about. Becker getting production from Durkis. News with a few points as well. Benilde St. Margaret's Trying to get the others involved here. 64-49. Kroll will take the spot of Durkis. Kapsner averaging 6.2 points per game. 3.8 rebounds, she completes a three point play. Sixty-four fifty. Brown, the kick out to Neust, her three is short. McGee takes the rebound in stride. That can spell trouble for opponents and that's why. McGee with 23. It's a 12 point game as both sides have opened the spigot, the floodgates offensively. Becker had that sizable lead in the first half. Westine missed the three, McAdams with the rebound, Brown will try. That comes up short. It was 47-31 at the half. Lumpkin fakes the three, goes baseline for the score. She gets on the board and it's a 10 point game. 
Red Knights, not out of this yet. But with so many three-point snipers for Becker, you have to watch that perimeter. An illegal screen. Another stop for Benilde St. Margaret's. 9.06 to go. And remember, Becker had to use a couple of timeouts to get players out of a jam along the baseline. You might use one of them in a situation like this where the Red Knights have put together a few scores. McGee fires. Can't land the three. But the rebound is tipped to her, and she will take it inside again. Another layup for the sophomore. McGee with 25. She's no stranger to stepping up in big games. Had 31 against Eden Prairie. One of two 31-point games this season. And the margin is within 10. High low for Becker, Westine. The fadeaway. Olsen trying to go outlet. Ridley couldn't quite corral the pass. And I noted this last year, Fridley, the eighth grader, sometimes it takes a while to pick up on those tendencies and instincts, especially when you have high caliber players like Olsen and McGee. They can make others around them better, but it does take a little time for that chemistry to manifest. Free throws coming from Akadet, or Kreft, I should say, as Becker gets a couple of chances. Friedley with her second personal foul. Kraft, another one of those players who has seen more playing time with Alexis Rose out. Kreft, however, just shooting 58% from the free throw line. And she'll make one of two here. You have to think Kreft and Durkis are a couple of players who will polish those free throw strokes of theirs over time. But plenty of time remains in this one for Benel St. Margaret's to level a charge, and Zahara Bishop does just that. Drive around the picket fence leads to a three-point play chance. Bishop averaging 8.6 points per game. Four rebounds, and like Olsen, plays for the top Fury team in her class. Olsen almost got the save. It's a seven-point game. We don't see Margaret's trail by as much as 17. Westine out to Brown. Tried the pump fake. Bishop wasn't fooled and knocked the ball out of her grasp. McGee, look out. Bullseye! Twenty-eight for McGee. Brown, the step through. She'll shoot two. Six fifty-three to go. Four-point game. Brown, one of the better free throw shooters for Becker. Shooting 74%. Dependable is one word Dan Baird would use to describe her. And that dependable senior point guard has 27 points after making the freebies. But Zahara Bishop 
with a quick answer for Benel St. Margaret's, and she's got eight. This is turning into a game, jump ball, Becker with the possession arrow. Brown to Neust, back to Brown, three ball, short, McGee gets through one defender, she's got numbers, can't get the finish that time, but once again, Benel St. Margaret's, they've been crashing the paint, jamming it up, and on offense, that's given them a couple of second chance buckets, Olivia Olson up to 15, and we go from a 17 point margin down to two, 67-65. Lots of time left in this one. As we said though, Kendall McGee, not afraid to take that starring role when needed. And she and Olivia Olson pair out quite nicely together. Tim Ellison, a little modest when I mentioned that dynamic with him. He said, we're trying to get them even better. And coming from him, maybe not a surprising assessment. That's what it takes though. You can't settle with what you've got. You're always trying to get a step better. And Benel St. Margaret's trying to complete a comeback here. We've seen some big ones in our time. This would be a notable one. Fueled by Kendall McGee, Olivia Olson doing her part as well. She has 15 points. Kendall McGee with 28. Benel St. Margaret's has history like Becker. Both have won state titles in the past. Benel St. Margaret's 2006 and 2010. Becker winning 2007 in class 3A, both schools that is. And it took them a little while. Becker did make it to state back in 2016 when Mackenzie Kramer played for the Bulldogs, but they were under a different regime back then. Had that surprising win to reach the semis that year. But the last several from 2019 on have been something of a golden era. But right now, Becker Trying to get out of here with the win. They have seen a 17 point lead diminish to two. Bishop got the swat. Becker picks up the loose ball, 5.33 to go. And they can reset. Benel St. Margaret's refusing to quit though. Noosed, short on the three, and a foul. Benel St. Margaret's out of fouls to give, so free throw's coming. And Bishop picks up her fourth personal. 5.20 to go. Becker getting a couple second chances of their own. They have one timeout left. Benel St. Margaret's has three. Ayla Brown. She and Neust, I believe, both got 1,000 points. Within a short span of each other, Brown matching a season high. She has hit her last four free throws. The Becker fans, that was close. Bishop sees a three, and that's long. Neust to Brown. Noose does not have a three-pointer. Looking to change that here. Comes up short. McGee doesn't have the space for a take. Bishop eyes the three. And gets a second chance bucket off the window. So it's a two-point game again, 69-67. Bishop with 10. Noose on the take, you bet. No three-pointers for Danny, but a much-needed bucket on that possession. 
High low, Olsen continuing to get swarmed down there, and Becker has done a serviceable job. Westine, three ball quarter pocket. The lead is now seven. 3.56 to go. McGee. Olsen got control of it, still having trouble finding her shot. She has 15 points, but not the most efficient game for her. But she does draw the foul and will have a chance to score at the line. Olsen splits at the line, it's a six point game. McGee comes in for the swat. Olsen for three. Just not her day. Jerkis will go to the line. Fridley hit with her third personal, and Durkis will shoot two with 3.18 to go. We talk about the energy you expend when you work your way back from a big deficit. It's achievable, we've seen it before, but in the case of Benilde St. Margaret's right now, they're just not getting enough consistency out of Olsen. And Jerkis, with those free throws, goes up to 12 points. McGee off the screen. Olsen, she's not going to stop. Here's McGee, three off the heel. Like we said, Benel St. Margaret's, Olivia Olson, they will not quit. They won't give up just because plays aren't going their way or shots aren't falling. And if Olivia Olson didn't give that second effort, she wouldn't have 18 points. Benel St. Margaret's using a timeout with 2.56 to go. They'll have two remaining. Becker still with a foul to give, by the way, and Olsen up to 18 points. The story of this game, Becker's three-point shooting early. Marm Westine hitting a clutch triple a couple moments ago. She's got 24. So Brown and Westine, two of the big names and part of a talented core of seniors helping Becker, who have performed well in their home gym. We noted the wins over Eden Prairie and Roseville. Those both came here at Becker. How would they have fared at their place? Hard to say, but anytime you can take on a 4A team, a quality one, and pick up a win, that's a welcome sight. Becker almost coughed it up off the inbound. You don't want to do that. This late in the game with a lot at stake. Kendall McGee remains a defensive pass. She got the reach that led to the poke. But El St. Margaret's holding the arrow that time. When you look at the box score, you're going to see her 28 point number and marvel and amazement. But Benel St. Margaret's unable to score. Becker for the dagger. Westine got it off of Lumpkin. And it will stay with Becker. Yeah. 
So Becker can use up more time here. 2.06 to go. And remember, they are in the bonus. And not showing any urgency now. They're going to play keep away, and the audience applauding them. Westine. More keep away here. This is the last year you can take advantage of it without a shot clock. And they're just going to let time expire. They don't have to do anything more. They're going to wait for the foul if they can get it. There it is. And they used up about 40 seconds of clock, and that was set up by the hustle play from West Dean. And Danny Neust, who's shooting 76%, can effectively ice it. Becker 16 of 20 at the free throw line. Benilde St. Margaret's just six of eight. Bishop with a contested jumper. Benilde St. Margaret hanging on to their timeouts. They're gonna have to foul here though with less than a minute to go. And Ayla Brown has come up clutch at the free throw line in her last couple of trips. I think this game, when you look back on it, highlights just how tough it is to come back from a big deficit. If Becker holds on. But El St. Margaret's got within two points. They could not tie or take the lead though. And overall, I think the Bulldogs had the edge in those clutch hustle plays. That's not to say Benilde St. Margaret's didn't perform as Brown gets a new season high. McGee lands the three. So it's a four point game and McGee hits 31 again. That's the third time she has reached the 31 point mark in a game this season and it's not lost on me that they have come against high caliber opponents. She had 31 in the game with Eden Prairie, a game that Benilde St. Margaret's had a chance to win. 31 here against Becker. And win or lose, McGee is an athlete whose stock is going to go up considerably. So 79-75, both teams with one timeout left. But here's the situation. Becker still has a foul to give. Benel St. Margaret's with 10 fouls, so it's two free throws the rest of the way for Becker. And it doesn't get easier, at least until for Monday's game, as Addie Mack and company, a healthy mini Ha Ha Academy team, will make their way up to Becker. And then they'll close out the season with a few more Mississippi eight games. But look at the non-conference schedule. Providence Academy, Eden Prairie, Alexandria, top 10 team, Minnetonka, Roseville, Sauk Center, St. Michael Aberville. 48.7. If they don't get a stop at L. St. Margaret's, they'll have to foul quick. There's the foul. Bishop had four, so she had to be careful. They still have a few to go around. And Denny Neust, who made her last two free throws, will try to add two more.
like we said for Becker, they have solid free throw shooters and three point shooters. Those add up in close games like this. 81-75, Fidel St. Margaret's almost coughed it up. Becker will use her last foul to give with 23.1. That's the fourth on Brown, so Becker in position here to hang on for the win, but Brown doesn't want to commit a silly foul here. Red Knights trying to get a look for three and make it a one possession game. Kendall McGee's shot is long and that's gonna do it. A valiant effort from Bedell St. Margaret's, but They'll come up just a bit short, and Becker will take over as the number one team in Class 3A. They were number two. And like last year, they were a favorite to win it all. But a where did you come from effort out of Hannah Herzig gave Tatino Grace the state title last spring. Who knows what will happen this time around, but Becker will add another signature win at home against the team they could see a few weeks from now. McGee will add one more three to her total. It's gonna be just a bit short, 3.6 on the clock, but Kendall McGee with that picks up a new career high, 34 points. And as we were saying, a moment ago, whatever happens for Benel St. Margaret's this season, Kendall McGee, her stock to me, will increase significantly, if not exponentially. 34 points, and in these big games, she has embraced the leadership qualities we've come to see out of athletes like Olsen. Much has been made about the dynamic between the two. You had two high-level players who led their teams in scoring. How would they work together? If you look at the last couple of years, I'd say it's going quite well. And they'll have one more year together with Olsen the junior, McGee the sophomore. But today will belong to Becker. As Brown will try to add a couple more. Overall, I think this game emblematic of what we could see if these two meet again. And there's every reason to believe they will. Now, in postseason play, anything goes. That's the last foul for Bishop, but it's academic here. Anything goes in postseason play, so. You got to get through each round, but. If this is a preview of the state championship, all I can say is I hope you save a seat and grab some popcorn for round two because it's going to be electric. Brown adds two more. That's it, that's all. 84-78. Becker beats the number one team in class 3A. Off a season high for Ayla Brown, her first 30-point game of the year. Marn West team with 25. Plenty of help from Newston Durkas as well. And props to Kendall McGee, 34 points, a career high for her, and just another chapter in a blossoming varsity career for the sophomore. We'll try to get a word with some of the Becker players before we call it a day. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. Becker beats Benilde St. Margaret's 84-78. Joining me are Ayla Brown and Marn Westine. 
Coming off a big win as the Becker Bulldogs knock off the number one team in Class 3A. Of course, the two of you know this could be just the first of two meetings. That being said, it's always nice to get the win. And what do you think it says about this team's capability to pick up a big win and hold off a charge from Benilde St. Margaret's in the second half? Um, our goal is just to ultimately like play discipline, and I feel like we did a really good job of that, and that just shows the hard work our team has put in just at practice and stuff um, these past couple weeks to prepare. Yeah, I, I agree with Dale. A lot of hard work and just being focused in practice and focused on all the games and competing. And you've had to do it with some adjustments. I know, Maren, you missed a few games. Alexis Rose unable to play for the remainder of the season, and then Lauren Kroll comes in. So there have been some pieces that have shuffled in this lineup, but one thing that's consistent, your three-pointers, you hit some big ones today, the two of you did. How was that helpful in setting the tone? Oh, for sure. It was super helpful, especially in that first half, just to come out strong and get that big lead at half was super helpful for us. Um, and just showing consistency in our shot, was it was yeah. great. Yeah, To have that piece of our offense is so important. To be so lethal from three is just helpful for our driving and attacking in our screen and roll. So. And it helps to be a, a reliable shot from the free throw line as well. The two of you did that. Maren, you regularly hit 90%. What goes into your technique? Because uh, hitting 90%, no matter the level, that is a huge deal. Yeah, practice. Same thing every time, same routine, same shot. So, yeah. And Ayla, you picked up your first 30-point game of the season. It was you who set the tone early with five three-pointers, and then the rest of your team got involved as the game went on. But you've come up big in some of these high-level games, 29 against Providence, now 31 here or I should say 32, I almost shorted you a point. That would get me in trouble. But 32 against Benilde St. Margaret's, uh, what do you think helps you go up another level when you play high-powered teams like Providence Academy or Benilde St. Margaret's today? I would just say, like, open gyms, practicing my shots and rhythm and my teammates, um, super helpful. Danny did a great job um, movement on the on offense and got, like, us open shots, which is really helpful, too. And Maren, you uh, spelled for Ayla in the second half. Well, I mean, that's not the right way of putting it. Ayla did just fine, but you helped Becker hold off that charge. You hit a big three as Benilde St. Margaret's got within two. When you saw the Red Knights dwindle that margin from 17 to two, how do you stay focused? Uh, just competing. We know that we want to win the game. We know we've worked hard enough to be good enough to win the game. So competing and just doing what we can. Now, there are a couple of things I was hoping to get clarification about. Ayla, I understand you like coffee and Odyssey. What exactly is Odyssey? <laughs> it's like uh, kind of like podcasts of stories that I grew up listening to as kids, and I, we still like them. Yeah, likes them I, I, I do like them. That is true. Okay. I'm like, Odyssey. What is Odyssey? <laughs> I've seen a couple. So it's a podcasting type of? It's, it's like yeah. stories. Yeah. Okay. So it's a story, like yeah. kid stories. Yeah. So. Well, I guess the two of you never did grow up, did you? Not really, no. <laughs> Toys R Us, if you ever come back, I think you have a couple of uh, spokespeople here. No. <laughs> well, what about you? Now, are you a coffee person, Marn, or do you have another go-to drink? I am not a coffee person. I like energy drinks, but <laughs> caffeine, but not coffee, no. Caffeine, but not coffee. Well, there's a few, like Celsius, I think. that would... You're probably a Celsius person, aren't you? Yep. All right, well, Ayla and Maren can settle which drink is better uh, at another time. <laughs> and before we go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Um, hi, Mom and Dad. <laughs> hi, Mom and Dad. <laughs> hi, Mom and Dad, and I'll, I'll get this out of the way now. In Ayla's case, I'd say good grief, emphasis on good. If you understand the reference, you'll know where I'm getting at. And Maren, once again, I have to say great Scott. <laughs> I said that last year, but you had such a good performance. Uh, you, that was a, it was a great Scott kind of game today. <laughs> thanks for stopping by. Congrats on the win. We'll see you in a couple of days, but uh, enjoy the Super Bowl weekend. All right. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Ayla Brown and Marn Westine, and that wraps up a fittingly super matchup on Super Bowl weekend. For the rest of our crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.